Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome on this Saturday morning. I, we're so happy that you came. Um, we are excited to have you here for this visioning day, um, to have your minds at work and the spirit move through you so that we can know what's in store for our church. Um, so thank you for taking the time to sign up and to come. Thank you for um, wanting to discern together. Thank you for community. So um, we want to welcome you into the day. And if you could uh, join us in hymn 451, Be Thou My Vision. Is Jackie here? Oh. 451. 451. 451. for the day with you just so that you know what's coming your way. Um, why re-envision our mission statement at this point? Um, well, churches often only look at their existing mission and vision statements in times of crisis and transition, um, but by looking at statements during times of stability, um, congregations can set a path to walk along and set goals to grow as an organization and, and as a body of Christ. This process is an act of discipleship. How do we become the best Christian body that we can be in this time and in this clear place? We lead through, pra through prayer, discernment, and by making out a path for the church that is faithful, clear, and relevant to the current life and climate of the church. Kalamazoo First UMC created and then reviewed our current and vision, our current vision and mission statements um, in 2005 and then again in 2009. Um, since this time, the church has continued to grow and build on our historical foundation in the Kalamazoo community. As we discern next steps in our church's journey, we now find ourselves asking uh, these driving questions. Who are we after experiencing the COVID-19 global pandemic? 
How might we respond and be relevant to a societal culture which is turning away from organized religion? How might we purposefully invest in future generations by building from our historical foundations? How does our vision and mission align with our identity as a church and communicate to others what we are about? This is connected also to our um, IDI work. How might we empower and align the actions of our church leaders? And how might we articulate a clear vision for our shared life as a church community? To answer these questions, we must invest in a collective process of discernment and commitment to, pur to purposeful, <laughs> wow, to purposeful implementation of the resulting plan. Please join and sing uh, hymn 405, Seek Ye First. The scripture that we are using for um, this day and throughout this time of our vision and um, mission writing is Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people are wild. Those who keep the law find happiness. Good morning and welcome. I'm going to take you on a, a prayer walk outside of this beautiful sanctuary. We have had a presence in this city for almost 200 years. We're getting close. Uh, not always in this space. But, yes, sir? Oh. Or what I can do is just use my principal voice and you'll hear me without this thing. But Okay. Is that better? I might need the tape thing, but okay. Um, we've had a presence here in our community for almost 200 years, not always in this space. Remember, this was built in 1929. We had a history of saints and people who have gone before us that saw a vision and had a mission of what we could do as we moved out into our community and our world to change lives. This place is a place of breathing in, and I remember Matt saying, if we look up in the rafters, 
our saints and all those who have gone before us are looking down at us and praying uh, for our vision and our mission to move forward and change lives. So every Sunday and every time we come here, we breathe in the love of God and we learn about how we need to serve. And I'm going to take you on a prayer walk that takes you outside of this place where we're meant to breathe out and serve God and be the hands and feet of Christ. So if you get yourself in a position of comfort, your feet flat on the floor, maybe your hands just up on your lap, you might be a person who likes to just close your eyes. Or you're a person who just likes to have their eyes gaze slowly. And I'm inviting you on a mindful prayer walk where we're going to imagine ourselves walking, noticing, being curious about what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we feel outside of the walls of our church. I will lead us through the prayer walk with prompts, and I'll pause for a few minutes of quiet before bringing us back. So as you've settled into this posture that's natural for you, either closing your eyes, or, if that's comfortable, or allowing your gaze to go soft, let's take in some deep breaths. Ah, oh, let those out. Deep breath. Let that out. Another deep breath. Don't pass out. Now imagine you're walking out of the church doors by the parking lot. And under that brand new banner that says, go forth to love and to serve. Imagine who you might see as you walk away from the church building. What sounds do you hear? As you continue to walk, how do you feel? Take notice of where you're walking. Are you walking towards our city community? Are you walking towards Western or K College in that way? Are you walking towards a neighborhood, either north or south of us? Walk a little further. How are you feeling? What do you notice? As you continue on your walk, what are you feeling drawn to pray for? Who are you being drawn to pray for? We'll take a pause in a moment for you to think about that. Each of us on our heart has a prayer for someone or something outside of this place where we breathe out. Begin your journey back to the church. And as you turn around and bring yourselves back to this place where we breathe in the love of Christ, what do you notice that you didn't before? Who do you encounter? What sounds do you hear? What are you curious about?
as you come back here to this sacred space of breathing in, who or what do you bring with you? What do you need to let go of so you can be fully present with us today? Let's take pause to give gratitude to the one who brings us together here today. Amen. So friends, we, um, when you came into the, the sanctuary today, you were each given a piece of fabric. And if you've noticed, or hopefully you've noticed throughout the weeks that we've been doing our kind of pre-work throughout service, there has been a basket that has been starting to get bigger and bigger um, as we add more to this basket. So we want you to take that piece of fabric and just take a moment to kind of reflect on what are your hopes for our church? Like, what is your vision for our church? Where do you see us in five years and 10 years? Like, who are we serving and how are we, how are we in the community? So I'm going to give us a few moments just to kind of hold on to that fabric and just kind of think about what it is that you see our vision being. So each of our stories and each of our individual um, gifts that we bring to the church make us this church. And we all collectively need to be a part of this process in order for our vision, our mission, to really be um, true to who we are. And so these, these pieces of fabric not only represent what our hopes are as individuals, but it's also braided together with everybody else's to create who we are as a church. So this, we're going to invite you in just a moment to bring these pieces of fabric up that have imparted your dreams and your hopes and your vision of this church into this basket here. And what we're going to do with those is we're going to, uh, Deb is going to attach them to these balls of fabric here, and they will be braided in because we cannot do this work alone. We have to do it together. And so that's a symbol. This is a symbol to show that we're doing this work together. We're braiding our stories together. Um, so while we bring that up, we're going to have um, Jackie play Round the Rivers Bend for us um, so that we can sing and bring up our, our pieces of fabric and just place them in here with your hopes and dreams as we sing this beautiful song. And it'll be projected on the screen. Oh, also, if you didn't get one at the start, though, we have a basket up here for you.
um, I would like for, to pray us into the day. I know it feels like the day has already started, but it hasn't. There's so much more to come. Um, so I would like to pray us into the, the part of our work. Uh, we will be, after this prayer, we'll be headed down to the Wesley Hall. Dear God, thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for um, the gifts that you give and those gifts of discernment and creativity and uh, to, to be alongside you in this work. Um, please help us to keep that perspective as we move through this day. Please help us to keep the perspective that you are near and that you are guiding us. We are not guiding you. Um, help us to move along uh, as the Spirit nudges us toward um, the work of the vision and the mission of your church, of your work, of your way that you want us to be with each other and in community. Um, Help us keep that close. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, we are going to sing that one, so not that one. Oh. Ooh, that's a good one. Thank you all for your vulnerability, for your willingness to share, and to just be present with us today. Um, we're going to kind of end some of our time together. Deb was um, sewing those pieces that we put in, or that we put our thoughts and our prayers and our hopes uh, into this and was braiding it. And so we kind of have this, this ball of braided that was actually happened today. Um, we are going to invite you actually to come back up again and to select another piece of fabric. Uh, this piece of fabric is actually going to be um, something that you're gonna end up taking home with you as a reminder of our time together, as a reminder of, of our braided story together and how each of us is part of this. Each one of us, each voice needs to be heard and shared. And so this is a way to rem remember this day um, so as you come up, just kind of grab a piece of fabric that, that you feel inclined to take and then take it back to your seat. And then we'll have a moment of prayer after everybody's collected their, their fabric. So come on up.
right, with the, that piece of fabric that you have, I want you to just kind of hold it in your hand while we, we kind of pray over this process. You just, uh, would you all pray with me? Thank you, God, for this day, for this time that we could have together um, to help build this community and to help us grow into what it is that you see us to be. Be with us at the, the team of people who are going to try to craft something that is really embodies what it is that we've done and worked on today and be with all of us as we go forth with this piece of fabric reminding us that we are a community together um, that we are in this together and that our voices um, are heard in your name we pray amen all right and now matt and julie are going to come up and do a liturgy with us We are going to lead you in a liturgy from a book that is entitled Every Moment Holy. So would you please join us? Our lives are so small, O oh Lord. Our vision so limited. Our courage so frail. Our hours so fleeting. Therefore, give us grace and guidance for the journey ahead. We are gathered here because we believe that we are called together into a work we cannot yet know the fullness of. Still, we trust, we trust the, the voice of the, the one who has called us. And so we offer to you, O oh God, these things. Our, our dreams, dreams, our plans, our, our vision. vision. Shape them as you will. Our moments and, and our, our gifts. gifts. May they be invested toward bright, eternal ends. And together, richly, bless, bless the, the work, work before, before us, us O oh God. God. Shepherd us well, <laughs> lest we grow enamored of our own accomplishment or entrenched in old habit. Instead, let us listen for your voice, our hearts ever open to the quiet beckonings of your spirit in this endeavor. Let us, in true, true humility and poverty of spirit, remain ever ready to move at the impulse of your love in paths of your design. You alone, O oh God, by your gracious and life-giving spirit have power to knit our imperfect hearts our weaknesses, our strengths, our stories, and our gifts to one another. Unite, Unite your, your people and, and multiply our meager offerings, O Lord, Lord, that, that all, all might resound, resound to your glory. glory. May our acts of service and creation, frail and wanting as they are, be met and multiplied by the mysterious workings of your Spirit, who weaves all things together toward a redemption more good and glorious than we yet have eyes to see or courage to hope for. May, May our, our love and our, our labors now, now echo your, your love and your labors, O oh Lord. Let all that we do here in these our brief lives, in this our brief moment to love, and this the work you have ordained for this community flower in winsome and beautiful foretaste of greater glories yet to come. O, o Spirit, Spirit of God, God now, now shape our hearts. O Spirit, Spirit of God, God now guide, guide our hands. O Spirit, Spirit of God, God now build, build your, your kingdom, kingdom among us. us. Amen. Let us stand and sing again round the river's bend. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to sing into it. Okay. So when Jennifer Clark wrote this wonderful text to this hymn, she was so very clever. And uh, there are lots of I verses, and then there are also 
you verses. And so to highlight that and to highlight the work that we have set out to do in our community, you can think of this as I personally, or you can think of this as I FUMC and then looking out to you into the community. So I'm gonna ask you if you guys would represent the I side, this side here, and it might be a little bit weaker. We have a few uh, less voices on this side. And then you guys are the you side saying, yes, we do, we hear you. We want to know your story and we hear you. And so you guys are the I verses, you guys are the you verses, and on verse seven, if you'll notice, it is a we verse. And on the we verse, we will all sing together. Please uh, join me in singing Round the River's Bend. And let's stand up, please. Thank you. Well, friends, it has been a wonderful and joyous day. I hope you all enjoyed the potato bar, because I did. Um, I'd like to send out a big thank you to both Diane Owen Rogers and Lisa Batten for leading us in this work. 
It is, it is much appreciated, and I don't, I mean, I'm a little bit biased because one of them's my wife, but I feel like what they provided with us was a really great foundation to, to really dig into this work. Uh, so on behalf of myself and Derek Wheaton as co-chairs uh, co of the church council, we again thank you so much for being here, for being present, for being part of this church and part of this amazing community. We could not be here and do any of the work that we do without all of you. So uh, go in peace and hopefully we will see you tomorrow morning uh, where we will again bless the work that we did today. Um, I don't know if we're going to sing the song again, but that would also be really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and look forward to November 19th, which will be the day that we really do roll out that official new vision statement um, that we and our values that we can use as we do this wonderful work here at our church. So go in peace, everyone. Have a good one.